Welcome to Education in Focus. I'm your host, Eliana Kernodo. The Government Accountability Office released a report examining arrest rates in schools. Joining me to discuss this is Chalkboard News Editor Brendan Clary. Brendan, briefly, what is the Government Accountability Office and what's kind of the context for this report? Yeah, absolutely. So the Government Accountability Office is like uh, like the Office of Inspector General sort of for a lot of different federal agencies. Like it's like an Inspector General agency where it can can uh, has like a congressional mandate to investigate uh, data that the federal ag- agencies produce, like kind of hold them accountable. It's like a watchdog agency. Um, and I, it's like nonpartisan as far as I'm aware. And they, they can basically say like, what is the government doing to uphold like what the government should be doing or like, is it failing like its aims? Right. So if, if there's like a program, for example, I've covered this with the department of uh, defense education activity, right. The, the government accountability office had a report that showed that, that they were taking too many tests. Like there wasn't really enough time for learning or, you know, like brought, brought up, brought up questions about like the standardized testing there. So basically like, how can we make the, the government run better? Right. And that's, that's always like a good thing. You know, it's kind of a cool thing when you have like as a taxpayer, if you have like an entity that's kind of looking out for like, are you getting your money's worth? Like, are you getting what you're supposed to be getting from this government agency that ostensibly works for you, works for the people and, you know, works for the good of everybody. Right. So just making sure that those things are happening, right. And that there are protocols in place. And I think there's like financial auditing and different kinds of auditing as well. So kind of all around, like, you know, it's a good, a good agency for like, are the different um, federal agencies doing what they're supposed to be doing? So it offers like very in- incredibly, um, useful intelligence about about that front and and looking at things maybe from a different way that's like kind of critical of like it's not just what an agency is saying is is like the talking point of like an administration it's like okay no this is the actual here are the aims or here here, here's the aims that they're doing and here's like the actual goal and here's what they can do better right and they'll actually send the recommendations back to the agency and have them respond which is really interesting so he kind of has like that whole back and forth there too along with you know some of the nuts and bolts uh, which is pretty cool And then for context, the Departments of Education and Justice, uh, there's like two federal branches basically that enforce the civil rights law over uh, discrimination in schools nationwide, right? And and that basically prohibits discrimination on on things like race, sex, disability, and that includes like police interactions with students. And so the According to the GAO's report, there's there was a um, an appropriations bill which included a provision for the office to review the role of policing in schools, and so that that's where this came out of. So there's recent legislation uh, through like an appropriations bill that basically said try to address like what uh, the Department of Education's data show about the extent to which different student groups are arrested in K-12 schools and whether police uh, being in schools is associated with student arrest. So they have like a, a congressional mandate from an appropriations bill to look into this. So it's, you know, basically Congress is saying, hey, you need to look into this data and see and see what you find. So that is the context of this. So what did they find as they looked at this? Like what factors are correlated with higher arrest rates? Yeah. So essentially the Government Accountability Office found based on the Department of Education's data from almost every United States state school district that uh, a student's race and ethnicity, uh, gender and disability status. So these different characteristics were very like prominent. Uh, and that's that's the, the language from the report here, very prominent with respect to rates of arrest and referrals to police. So that's from the report. Uh, so especially when those characteristics are intersected. So for example, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander boys with a disability were like six times more likely than the national average to be arrested. So, and then black students who are males, who are boys with, with a disability were also like, I, I think four and a half times or, or roughly more likely to be arrested compared to like the national average, right? So you, you can see, and then, and so then it kind of goes through the different, um, the, so for boys who had a disability, the difference in arrests, you know, widen further. So essentially you, you have like kind of these different intersections of, of race and gender and, you know, different kind of demographic you know, information kind of affecting that, right? And so the report helpfully breaks down, like, here's, you know, how many times uh, over the national average somebody like, you know, a certain student sort of demographic. And it was interesting with that uh, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander information, the the report kind of makes clear that, like, 
uh, Hawaii has like a very strong like arrest rate. So that is sort of, and they also have like, uh, you know, disproportionate native Hawaiian Pacific Islander population of students. So that, that really kind of throws up the demographic there. But I mean, that's, you know, that's the demographics and how they're kind of using that data. So you kind of have to interpret things like that of like, why is that so high? Well, you have to look at the policy in, in Hawaii, right? So there's some kind of interesting nuances that, that are in the report. So it's, it's very comprehensive, 67 pages long. If you're interested, in, you know, I would 100% recommend. And that's pretty, that's pretty widely available. You could look that up. Yeah. And like you said, with Hawaii, it was even their average students were, were more likely than students in other states to be arrested. It also looked at the impact of having police in schools and how that's correlated to arrest rates. Yes. Yeah. So that was that was another thing that I looked into um, as part of the mandate there. And, and the arrest rate, it found that the GAO found that arrest rates more than doubled in schools with police present compared to similar schools without police. So I think these would be similarly situated schools. And they're looking at all of the nationwide data. And then among the 51% of schools with police present at least once a week, the GAO found that arrests were more common when the police were involved in student discipline. So like if I think school resource officers were involved, you know, as part of the policy to be involved with with what happens to students after they break the the code of conduct or the policy or whatever, then I, I think that that was, you know, like an indicator. So I think that, you know, this is kind of affirming what a lot of critics of policing in schools have, have brought up. And they basically said, you know, if you have police there and, and students are being arrested, then then they're more likely to end up in the juvenile court system, right? And then that can lead to worse outcomes, right? And then it starts getting into a bigger question of like, what is, you know, the, the role of, of the juvenile court system? Is it to like help students reform or is it to like kind of punish them with these kinds of mechanisms in place? And, and so it starts getting into like broader questions about like what critics call the school to prison pipeline, right? Um, and then there are some, you know, bigger concerns about that, especially like in, in Chicago public schools, for example, um, where the Board of Education has uh, essentially move to not uh, have any school resource officers at all in schools, right? Because of this kind of criticism, disparate uh, impacts, you know, different students, uh, students of different like minority, you know, demographics and, and some of these compounding intersecting identities having more arrest rates, you know, the critics looking that, at that and saying like, we have to do something, we have to get the school resource officers out of our schools so that we're not doing that. And we can try to come up with different ways to to keep order in our schools, and not have, you know, aggression or, or fighting or anything like that. So, and usually going to stuff like restorative practices. And I, and then you can have pushback to that as well of people saying, that, no, we need somebody there uh, to provide safety for teachers or staff if things are going off the rails. So it's this is a very contentious uh, topic and it's sort of hard. You have to, you look at the data and it's, it's kind of very much divided from a lot of the contention because it speaks for itself. They're using, you know, state like uh, district reported data you know, at like a national level. But then if you start getting into the nitty gritty, you can pretty quickly see how people are riled up about this, how, you know, the teachers would say, no, I need somebody there to protect me in case something happens. And then, you know, critics of, of police officers in school saying like, why are our kids going to jail if they break the rules at school? You know? So again, like, like so many things in our society, they're very contentious. Yeah. And, and it gets into ever the problem in statistics of the question of correlation doesn't always equal causation, but how do you break that down and figure that out? Because it, the data is still significant. It's still telling us important information and kind of digging through that can be difficult and can be interpreted differently by different people, which is one of the difficult parts about it. Absolutely. Well, Brendan, thank you for your insights on this story and listeners can keep up with this story and more at chalkboardnews.com. 